Well, welcome back, everybody. It's it's part five of our of our mini series with Keith. I threatened in the last one. I said we'd come back, and we have. But this time we've not just come back. We've we've made ourselves at home because we stayed over last night. We went out for dinner, didn't we, with we the did. girls? It was lovely. Yeah, uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, a, yeah. A, a lovely treat. So we've got, I think. Tender heads this morning, I think it's fair to say. Well, I've had to take the uh, paracetamol this morning for <laughs> soon. As I got up, he's a bad influence on me. I, you. I can't keep him away from here. I but... don't. I don't know if I'm a bad influence on Keith or Keith's a bad. Influence. One of us is a bad influence. I blame the girls. I don't know about well, you. I blame the girls. Well, they, well, they must have put us, you know, steered us in the right direction. Yeah, I think, and uh, kept buying the beer for us. I think that was the case. I think that's probably what happened. We've got. Um, we've got, as is always the case when we come to Keith's, we've got a wonderful episode today. We, we're going to look at, um, at sort of the principles of selection. So Keith's got some incredible birds. We've seen them. We'll see them again. And today is really going to be a, a, a sort of look over, you know, the, the selection choices that Keith's makes and, and, and how he selects things. And when I talk about wonderful birds, well... Since we were last here, Keith, you've had another show, the second show that you've done of the season, and, well, you've only gone and bloody won it again, haven't you? Well, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, for this year with COVID, etc., and with this avian flu, we've only managed to do two Norwich shows, and that, the first one was at Stafford, which was uh, quite a success for me. And uh, the next big Norwich show was South Books, which is an all canary show. And uh, so people have brought their canaries from all parts of uh, the UK down there. And um, I was lucky enough to take Best Norwich, second Best Norwich, third Best Norwich again, uh, under a different judge. And uh, it went on to compete against all the top uh, winning section canaries. And uh, again, Look on me, saw it. Took best in show again. The the modesty of the man, you know. I had a good show at Stafford, best exhibit. I had a good show, you know. I was, yeah, I had a bit of luck, um, and and a, and a special show because uh, um, you, you won the the Brian Hogg Memorial Trophy. Yes, well, that's that is uh, a nice honour to to have that presented to me. Yeah. I hold it for twelve months. Had my name inscribed on there, and then hand it back to sell books yeah. or someone else to win it. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I don't mean to sound as if, um, you know, because anybody can beat me. That's what they're out there. It, it uh, only takes one bird for some, you know, another uh, exhibitor to um, show their bird, and they can beat me. Yeah. And I haven't got a problem with that. No. It's good competition. Absolutely, absolutely is. Well, listen, as always, everyone, it's going to be another good one. I can feel it in my bones. I can just about feel my bones because it's bloody freezing in here. So, as always, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back and enjoy the show. So, Keith, the, the room, um, it's its sort of haven't quite finished the show season yet. And we've got, you know, the, the I nearly said the fives. We, we have got the fives in the flight cages, dare everyone. Dare you, right? <laughs> We've got the Norwich hens um, in the flight cages, and and there's a there's a few fewer than last time we were here, and and there's still some you know still some to make the selection from. So you you've got them in here. You'll you'll I guess you'll you'll pull them and and, and keep looking at them and, and see how they develop. Well, I'm I'm down to my final selection now, yeah. and uh, I don't want any birds to go now until I've done the final selection so there's still birds to go to people what I've promised birds for yeah. but I'm trying to hang on till after Christmas yeah. um, because if you ain't careful you can let good birds go and regret letting them go yeah. so once I've made my mind up around Christmas that's the time when I've got plenty of time sort out the pairs uh, for the future breeding season yeah and I think that's that that's the sort of the first thing isn't it it's it's not being a you know you, you move some birds away um, but it's not to be in a hurry to, to make that selection that's right that's right I, I need to look at uh, all aspects of the bird yeah for pairing on the the relationship the line that's the main thing because we're all you know to breed a good uh, stock you've got a line breed 
and see how the relations go and then you, you go from them sta next stages on obviously we're looking as near to the model yeah right so people talk about stock birds show birds to me is i tried it best to best looking at the relationship and um i don't i don't say stock birds if the birds are winning for me they're as near to the mother as possible so that they've got to breed birds themselves yep. near to the mother yeah so i don't look for stock cocks big stock cocks and small ends they've got to be near to the mother as possible so their offsprings can be yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's. It's. It's a really. I think it's a really interesting dynamic because, as you look at, the one thing which is absolutely evident in the Norwich when you come in here is, they all look very similar. So you've achieved that sort of that standard of consistency and excellence across everything. And again, I mean that that that's that's what we strive for as breeders, isn't it? You want a, a stud of birds that that look the same. So you're breeding birds, as you say, you're selecting birds that look like the model, as close to the model. And and every year, I mean that that selection, the selection this year, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a tough one, isn't it? Well, it is. Well, I mean. If, if you've got a good selection of birds, then you're going to start looking at the finer points, the feather, right? The shape of the bird, the length of the bird, how the wings are sitting on the rump, how the tail is. So you're looking at the real fine points and, and uh, pairing them together yeah. to keep that consistency going. Yeah. Um, so we're not looking for a, a big bird to go with a small bird, so the medium bird comes out of them. As you said, Matt, the stocks in your bird room all want to look very similar. Yeah. And then if, once you got to that stage, it's just the finer points you're yeah. looking at. Yeah. Right? And that's, and that's something, as we've talked about, that's something which is done it's done over time. There's, the, there's no. You, you're not going to rush these decisions, no. are you at all? No, no. You got to, you got to remember. I've been breeding these nearly 50 years, and it takes time. People, people can offer you big money and think they're going to breed their stud within a year, two years. It, it won't happen. No. It won't happen. It takes time and, and patience. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you've got to have. And it. Um, but once you've got that line. Then you know you're on the right track. Yeah, and it's and it's then I guess the the, the challenge is is keeping it and and it developing and, and and we talked a little a bit earlier and it and it's almost sort of without knowing for sure you can you can predict to a certain extent. There's always the, the livestock, so there's always going to be something in there that that that, that catches us by surprise, but. You can almost predict, can't you, what, you know, you're, you're keeping good birds and then you've got a really clear view of, well, they should breed something similar of a similar quality. And, you know, if we look at the birds behind us, that's that's evident. That that quality is absolutely evident. Yeah, yeah there is. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the birds. I'm pleased how they're looking, you know. And, and it's been a, a successful breeding season for me, so I had the selection to, to choose from. And like I say, I'm down to my final selection now, and I need to get it right for this future uh, breeding season. But there will be a time when your birds are getting too close. Yeah. Right? Because you need the line going, the line going and that uh, family going. But there could be a time when you're getting too close, and you need to bring fresh blood in. You need to bring that, create that new vigour into your birds. So you've got to look for a bird um, from a breeder who probably has had birds from me in the past and we've got a good relationship and we swap a bird. Yeah. Um, just to keep that vigour going. But it's, it, it needs to be a good bird when you bring it in. Absolutely, it's got to be a good bird. It's no good bringing an inferior bird because your birds are going to go down. Yeah. So it's, it's a time. So. Probably I might bring a bird or two birds in every three or four years just to keep that figure going. Yeah. No, and, it, and it's a sort of, it's a related outcross in that sense, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. that's right. I mean, <clears throat> the top studs throughout the world 
if you look back, they're all related in some way or another. Yes. There was the Wrights, you know, they sent birds all over the world. Uh, Chris and Sam Goodall, you know, all good birds. So somewhere down the line, there's some relation there. Yeah, yeah. But um, you've got to keep freshening that blood up now and again. Yeah. Not every year, which, um, you know, I haven't done for a couple of years now, two or three years, but I've got a good friend... Alan Notte in Belgium, he likes my type of bird, I like his type of bird, and we've been doing a few swaps over the years, and it does keep that blood yes. flowing yes. stronger. And, and I think that, that from, from that line perspective, that's really important. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do now, Keith. We'll, uh, we'll have a little talk about numbers and structure and discipline, and, and we'll have a closer look at some of these fantastic birds, just honestly. Every time we come here, one of the things I said to Keith, you know, as I've been out on the road and as Keith's been out on the road, we, we've seen people come up and everybody says to me, oh, I really like the show map, but I really like it when you go to Keith Ferries. <laughs> well, as long as people can pick a, a tip or two up, and that's what all this is about. Yeah. And I've said this before, you know, I enjoy you having you down here. You tend to pull stuff out of me, which I may not tell people. But now I've got to this stage at my age, uh, whatever I've learned over 50 years, I want to pass on to, you know, the future breeders yeah. and try to encourage new breeders into it. And I think you're doing a marvellous job in doing this. Oh, yeah. bless you. It's a mutual appreciation society we've got on here. Right, let's go and have a, a chat about... First and foremost, should we, should we talk about the, um, the studcock birds and what you're looking for in them? Well, I mean, I, I, my final selection, I shall probably keep um, between 16 and 20 ends and probably between 12 and 16 cocks. But um, my main challenge this year, to keep a challenge going, I want to try to breed some good whites. So that's my future challenge for the next coming season. And uh, I lost my green line, so I'm... Go see from a, a fancy who I know well has got my bloodline, bring a pair in and, and try to breed some decent greens as well. So that's the challenge. But when it comes to me normals, like you're saying, I'm looking for, you know, eight buff cock birds of good, solid substance, and same with the, the yellow cock. And I don't really like pairing two ends to a cock, I like, you know, straight pairs. Um, but if I haven't got the right cocks, then I will put a cock to two ends. Like that cock this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, well. the, the cock with 20 hens. Let's have a closer look at them now. 20 babies, not 20 hens. <laughs> yeah, 20 babies. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, we've got some of the... Um, some of the, the, the cocks here, Keith, on, on this side, they're, they're in, in double breeders. Um, we've had, we've seen, you, we've seen you walk around with your bath trolley on, so they're getting baths every day. And, and we've, got, we've got some really nice over-year birds. We've got some really, really nice birds bred this year. And is that the sort of, when it comes to the, the selection of, of the cock birds for next year, will you... You talked about the sort of, you know, broad numbers, talked about the number of buff cocks that you'll keep. And then are you looking at a, a, a balance of flighted and unflighted? Yeah. Um, and, and I know taught there's a there's a, a, a yellow cock which was supreme a couple of years ago, and that's that's still here. Yeah. Um, how... Does it very much, do you have a system or does it very much depend on the birds? Do the birds di dictate the system or do the system dictate the birds? Well, normally, when, what I do like is uh, breeding uh, flighted to unflighted. Right. Right. Um, the unflighted birds, especially cocks, the ends will sort of put them right. Um, and then the, the, what would I say, the old buff cocks or the old um, yellow cocks or gooey young ends because um, they've been proven yeah but the the art of keeping a stud of norwich is keeping young stock 
You don't, you know, you can have real good birds and think, oh, I'm not going to get rid of that, I'm not going to get rid of that. But they, I like to try to keep young stock because if you do have a bad year and don't breed nothing, then those birds for the foreign year are another year older. Yeah. So I like to keep, uh, you know, like a 50 50 of floated, unfloated. And the, the young birds have got to be as good, if not better, than the parents previous. Yeah. And that's the way, you know, to progress with a stud of birds. Yeah. You're looking for those youngsters to be better than the parents. Yeah. And if you, you know, you might only find one or two out of um, the nest you've got. But if they are better than you, your, the parents, and a lot better, then you can afford to let the parents go. Yeah. But I do like to keep, you know, half of my birds, flighted birds. They've they've had their experience of breeding, and now bring it on to the young birds as well. Yeah, and and in terms of, I mean, some of the birds that we've got here, there's there's we've got a buff cock here, um, in fact we've got a buff cock here, and then a yellow cock at the top. Yeah. Um, and these are, are these, this is a flighted bird here, is it? Mm, is this flighted? Well, they're or two a... flighted birds. They're, yeah. two, they're, they're two birds. They're the ones that done me well last year. Yeah. So I'll keep them for one more year because they're proving themselves. That's the, the, the clear cock is the one where I had 20 babies. And this cock here, which Matt's trying to twist my arm for. I am trying. I'm trying really hard. I don't think I'm going to succeed. <laughs> he's, he, he bred some nice birds as well. So um, that, that's, a, you know, a good establishment of birds for me to continue with some nice young ends. Yep. Then there's a young yellow cock down there, variegated, and a variegated yellow cock at the top there. Yep. And what I have bred this year, of the amount I've bred, I've bred a lot of clear, so I'm going to get a bit more variegating into the birds this, this coming season. Right. Not right through, I mean, it's not better than looking at a nice clear clear bird. No. But um, I did breed a lot this year. No, I mean, they are, they are, we, we, we might have to wait another 12 months, but he's an absolute, we, we'll have a quick look at him here. He's he's a stormer, this buff cock, he, he really is. And and he, he's a bird that we sort of think that on our very first visit, he was one of three, wasn't he? There was a, right. a buff hen and, and a yellow cock as well. Yeah, he, he, got, he caught me eye then. Yeah, you've got a good memory there. <laughs> that's, that's had over 12 months ago when yeah. you, when you uh, videoed them, wasn't it? Yeah. And there, there was three nice, uh, a nest. Yeah. Nest to three and there is one of them and he has produced some, some lovely birds in fact the bird I'm putting in the cage navy raffle is from him right so there's a, a, a quick thing on the a quick plug on the cage and avery raffle as well so wonderful with with those those birds there and then behind me Keith in here we've got we've got a this is an unflighted variegated yellow cock in this cage, isn't it? And he's this is this is some bird. You must be you well, must I, be thrilled I'm, with him. I'm happy with him. He's not been shown yet. Um, he's a late bred bird, and he's just about finished molting. So I've entered him for the Southern Norwich Plainhead Club show, which is this coming following weekend. Hopefully, the show's going to be on through this. Um, as you all know, the, the, the problems we're having with COVID, etc. So I'm hoping it's going to be on. And uh, that's part of the, the team I'm sending out. And he's not a big bird, but he's got everything there. It's in proportion. Um, depends if, you know, what the judge is looking for. If it suits his eye, I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll yeah. like it. Yeah. And actually, as a, as a bird moving forward and, and progressing the study, he'd be one of the birds that will be in the in very much in the running when it comes to the final, final selection. Oh, I think so, I think so. Uh, like you say, he's, he's a late bred bird, and you have to be careful on late bred birds. Are they going to be mature enough for the early breeding? Um, but the, the breeding season this year was quite swift. And we had a lot of youngsters in a short period of time. So I'm sure he's going to be uh, mature enough to, uh, to breed. But, but you, have to be, you have to look at these things. And where you're buying birds from, one thing you need to ask is, when was this bird born? Yeah. Because if it was born in July, and you want youngsters in April, is he mature enough yeah. to produce? Yeah. No, absolutely wonderful. And then... 
we've got a, a you, you do like a saddleback, don't you? And well, they throw you. You know, some of my birds throw these saddlebacks, and I, yeah, they do catch your eye. And um, I do like them, especially in the end, more than the top. But that, but there's a nice saddleback there. Yeah, yeah no, that's a nice saddleback. And then underneath here, we've got another a, a really nice head mark bird. This is is this a let me, I'm trying to see the, it's, an, it, it's, it's, unflighted. it's unflighted. Yeah, that was second best at Stafford, second best in origin show at Stafford, that one, a young buff cock. And he's bred out the 2019 best canary that I had at Stafford. So he's short and cobby. Um, I, I need to keep him. He's going to be part of the breeding cycle this year. Yeah. Or, or this coming season. Yeah, and so, yeah. and that, and that sort of, that really for you then in terms of the the you know short and cobby that's that's really what you yes yeah it, it's a must so, i mean forget about soys and big birds the the model and the description calls for short and cobby six to six and a quarter they don't want to be no bigger than six and a quarter inches long that's the maximum one of these um years ago they used to say you know, a good big and a beat a good small one. Well, yes, it would if it's a real small, dinky little thing. It's got to be to the model. Yeah. And it's got to be in proportion. That's what it's all about. Forget about the real big head and no body. People like, you know, a bird with big heads. Everything has to be in proportion. Read the point scale on the model. Yeah. And there's 25 points for type. Yeah. And sureness. Yeah. Right. And then everything is built up from there. Yeah. It, after all, it is a type canary, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Super stuff. Well, we've had a look at, at some of the cock birds that will be uh, part of the running next year. We'll have... Uh, We'll have a little look at some of the hens and then, if we may, we'll we'll have a little look at some of the things that some of the birds, the whites and the greens that you're uh, that you've got plans for, Keith. Let's, oh yes, yeah, that's, uh, that's that's my next challenge. <laughs> oh, God help us all. Apart from breeding some real good champion folly, oh, like, yeah, not, not this man off the perch. <laughs> It's, uh, so Keith, behind us here, in uh, you've opened up the flight cages. So there's they're they're, they're the full width. You've got buff ends in one side, yellow hens just behind us here, and and they, I mean, it's going to be another tricky selection for you, mate, isn't it? <laughs> well, there's, uh, once I start to get them out in the show cages and look at them on the feather quality, and uh, you know. Uh, we feed him himself at the finer point. That's what I'll be looking for. Yeah. They got the yellow ends in there. Um, once I'm down to ten ends in either side, um, and then we finish showing, the cocks will go in there as well with it. So the yellow ends will have the buff cocks in there, so they're flying through the, the rest of the winter, yeah. and vice versa in the other one. So yeah. the, 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 as you've said, there was a divider in there. That's ideal for youngsters, so they're not flying from one end to another, knocking their perches out, their, their, their back claw. Yeah. Um, and touch wood. I'd never had a slip claw at all doing it this system. Yeah. Uh, I could have easily have had some if I'd have pulled that slide out so they went from one perch to the other, and yeah. that's where they knock them out. Yeah. So everything worked out well. Yeah. But now the slide is pulled and these ends can get fit and they enjoy themselves. They need to have plenty of stuff in there to keep themselves occupied, like the broccoli, the um, millet sprays, keeps them, keeps them occupied, yeah. keeps them busy. And although it is cold, it is sort of... Oh, it, it, it froze. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm waiting for Margaret to say breakfast is ready. <laughs> yeah, it's, it might have something to do with the beer last night, but it is. it feels very cold in here, Keith, today. Yeah. In terms of the... Uh, and, and the birds, you know, the birds are, are straight in their baths, aren't they? There's, there's no bother with them at all. In terms of the... Um, the hens, I guess, similar similar process of selection. You'll look at how they're bred. You'll look at where you want the line to go, and you'll pick, you know, the birds that are right. Will Will you? Because the because the quality is there, Keith. It, it might not necessarily be be an issue, but I know 
certainly some people would say, oh, you need really good cockbirds. You need really good cockbirds and you need really good henbirds. It, well, they need to, as I said earlier on, they need to be, you know, as near to the model. Yeah. They need to be... I keep my my show team as my breeding team. Yeah. Um, because there's more chances of breeding youngsters from them good winning birds. Yeah. It, that's my opinion. And that's yeah. what I've been doing, you know, for 50 years now. Then. Well, it's it's most definitely it's most definitely worked. Well, it's um. Well, I you know I'm happy with with the selection I've got. Keith, we've we've. We chatted about the uh, the hens and and the the cockbirds, and you mentioned at, at the beginning of the show about bringing in, um, you know, starting to to get back with some whites, which is which is a colour you've had some good success with in the past, um, and we got we got uh, well three birds here um, to, to to sort of help you progress in that that sense. This is a white hen at the top it's a young white hen now this has come back from my bloodline uh, two years ago when I had my bad season unfortunately I lost all my whites uh, I only had a couple I didn't breed any but um, you know through the malt etc I did lose them so I lost my line but I managed to bring one hen in a friend of mine who bred some on my line so that's going to help me a lot yeah and the other whites you see is a different uh, breed, different line altogether. Um, the mother is down there, and I bred one white this year, which turned out to be a cock. The cock has improved slightly to the mother, and so it's something to work on. Yeah. And I think that's going to take, on that line, fresh blood, different blood, but now bringing my blood into it. That hen, unfortunately got no head, but it's got the white gene in it, was put to one of my best flighted buff cocks, clear buff cocks, with a good head on it. Disappointed how this head turned out on this bird, but come next year when I put it to uh, a nice clear buff hen, maybe like the uh, best bird at Stafford, yeah. which has got a lovely head on it, next year I would hopefully see another improvement in it. Yeah. And it's going to take two or three years on that line. Yeah. I think this will be a lot quicker because yeah. it is my true line. Yeah. All right, so going back now to one of my cocks, um, I'm expecting and hoping that I'll breed some nice whites from that. Yeah. To put on the show bench next year. Yeah. So, and I think that's that's the sort of key, isn't it? You've, you've got a, a, a work in progress here, which is something that you're you're creating and like you say two or three years to get it to where you're comfortable with and then this one here which is your blood essentially in a, from a different room uh, and then that 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 coming back in uh you know with a with a really really good pairing this year and, and, and getting something on the bench next year which yeah. will be which will be great and and a, and a similar story there's a there's a green i think there's a green at the bottom here yeah, again I, that same year i lost uh, I, I don't breed many but um, I got a nice line of greens, and um, I lost those. And uh, managed from the same breeder as the white to bring a pair of greens in. And I like the cock very much. So when when you do sell a bird on, and you get, you strike this relationship up with uh, with the people who bought her on. Right? you can go back to them and bring your bloodline in. That's the sort of relationship you want to, and this is the sort of people you're selling your birds to. And um, I'm fortunate to bring a bird back in um, on my line, as good as that. Yeah. And uh, with the greens, that um, cock is nice. The in is not so nice, but I have to have what I can work with. Yeah. And next year, Let's see what we breed from that and keep improving. Yeah. And I'll bring another bird back in from that breeder. Yeah. And keep my greens going. Yeah. And I think that's 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 really what you're looking for, isn't it? You, you've got, as you say, you 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 you. It's your your blood. You're working. You've got people who you know you've looked after, and then and then that comes back. And and for me, that's 
there's that's what the hobby is about it's yeah. about having people who you know yeah. you help out and then when you're short they help you yeah. yeah you get that relationship you don't go out there forcing them to say look i want a bird back no you've got to have that you've got to have a lot of confidence and trust you know you're selling birds so and build that relationship up so you know that if you're in a problem you go back back to another bird yeah and that person will have a yorkshire from this one as well yeah so it's a, it's a nice relationship yeah that's what you're throwing and that and that for me that that is is what the hobby's about it's about sort of you, we're all competitive you know we all want to breed the, the best birds that we can but ultimately we want to progress the hobby and we want to we want to help people we want to look after people that's right that's right it's, it's been a, a lovely hobby for me for 50 years i've struck up so much great relationships one here oh, matter of fact bless you <laughs> right i never knew this man until this time last year but with we, we bonded quite well and we got quite a good relationship yeah and uh, I managed to sell him some nuggets as well didn't I? <laughs> one or two <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah, it's nice to have this um, friendship within the hobby As I wouldn't be in the hobby if uh, it was you know you're fighting against people and it's all you know about enemies and going out and beating people if I go out next week to a show and I get beat, and it's a, there's got to be a better bird than what I'm showing, yeah. I'll be the first one to shake their hand and congratulate them. Yeah, and that's and that's that's what the hobby's about. So, well, I feel Keith, I feel that you know we'll be back to do more progress updates on the whites and the greens and the wonderful birds behind us. That that sounds like a plan, mate, doesn't it? Well, I think so. No, let's hope we can see some improvement for you know after the next breeding season. Yeah, wonderful. And before we go today, we'll um, we'll just have a little chat through. We'll we'll move to another part of the room because people like to see the room. We'll move to another part of the room and we'll catch up on just the feeding and, and things that you're doing with them today. Yeah. Okay. So it is. It is a bit chilly in the room. It's fair to say, Keith. Keith's got his Keith Ferry look. His little. His little gilet on. I'm. Bloody I'm frozen. <laughs> yeah. Meal, yeah. He's, he's, he's bloody frozen. But la- largely, it, I'm going to have to confess. We've we've had a break for for breakfast and and a couple more paracetamol, Mister <laughs> Mister Ferry. Well, I thought you weren't going to tell him. Oh that. no, I wasn't. Sorry, it was a secret. I might cut that bit out. I might leave it. It's in your a, influence. Yeah. I, it's, uh, you got me in bad habits, but there. <laughs> I shall overcome when you're gone. I shall be back in bed <laughs> yeah. having a snooze. So when it when it comes to feeding, we've fed ourselves, which was wonderful. And um, and and the birds, you know, they got the, the the Norwich here in the flight cage. And there's a you mentioned earlier on about you know keeping them interested at this time of year. And there's there's lots of. Uh, well, there's lots of interest in there, isn't there, <laughs> over winter for well, them? I mean, as you're coming up for the winter, you don't want to be overfeeding your birds with too much rich food. They want to be on a quite a basic diet. And the uh, mixed canary is also added with plain canary in. But as long as there's a good, do- do- you know, decent, balanced diet. And um, so that'll be what they'll be on through the winter. Um... We've got the millet sprays. They can fly up there. They can play about with those, and they eat everything off those millet sprays. Keep them occupied. The um, we've got the greens there. The broccoli. They love, you know, going straight onto some fresh broccoli. They'll eat all that stalk as well. Most of that. Uh, the baths are in. We've got the grit. Um, in this tray here, I might uh, just put a little bit of um, rape and niger in there, just for them to play about in. But in the mix feed, there is no rape. Um, they it, it, don't know at this time of the year for them to get a little bit of fat on. You know they're going to, you know, uh, as they come into the breeding condition, is that they're going to fly that off anyway. They want a little bit of weight on. When you when you take a bird out and put it in your hand, you want to fill that body, not just feather. Yeah. And that'll see them through the winter. And you know they're going to be fit through the winter. Come breeding season, they want to get that off them. So depending on how much they're on them, they say depending on how you're going to feed them and the balance food on that. Yeah. But being a plain diet through the winter, you know, coming up to spring. 
giving them this extra food, the uh, germination seed, the egg food, is going to bring them into breeding condition. And um, also, while you're still showing, then I still give them a little bit of collar food, probably once every three days, just in case they lose a feather. Yeah. Yeah. So if it does grow back and they drop one, then yeah. it's it's coming back with colour in it and, yeah. not, yeah. and not patchy. Wonderful. Well, as always, it's it's a pleasure. Uh, another, you know, a, a joy. Um, really enjoyed it, mate, as always. Uh, the birds are looking good. Uh, I imagine people have, have picked up tips. They always do when, <laughs> when they watch these shows. And one of the things that we haven't talked about, but I have caught on film, you, you've got some... Some really nice, in, in obviously you've got the five switch, you know, which he, he continues to do well with. You know, not content oh, with good. dominating the Norwich, he continues to do well with the five. But you've got you've got some some of the the, the feeder birds that you use for the uh, for the Norwich, um, and the colour. I mean, we'll have a quick look at these in the flight. The colour you've got on them is incredible. Well, uh, I was lucky that a good friend of mine, uh, Paul Martin, he sent me some uh, of these. He said, you need some of my crossbred uh, for feeders because I was relying on the five. The five for good feeders. Yeah. You know, if they're fit, they'll feed. The Norwich, you know, we, we mustn't go away from not trying the Norwich to feed. But you've got to, as I've said before, you've got to guarantee that first round. Yeah. It's no good, you know, spending all this time getting your birds into breeding condition, thinking that the Norwich are going to rear that first round and they let you down. So you've got to have these feeders in reserve um, to guarantee that first round. Because that first round is going to be your show birds. Yes. All right? Um, but these feeders, what uh, my good friend Paul Martin, he sent me a food pair over. I bred this year 20 out of those. He did tell me they've got Norwich in them, uh, Red Factor, um, Diamorphic, and they're a lovely bird. But Paul didn't use the colour feeders, but they've had all the leftovers from the Norwich and the colour what's come out on, so they catch your eye, and that's what I want to see in any bird. Yeah. And um, I'm over, they'll be fantastic feeders for this year. Yeah. Now, this coming season. Yeah. Well, we'll have a we'll have a look at them. We'll have a look at them. And as I say, in the flight, they are they are pretty eye catching stuff, aren't they? Yeah. We mentioned before we need to find we need to find a, a bully hen for Keith. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do, uh, some of those real red coloured ones for the the cockbirds for yeah. a bully hen. Yeah. Colour what could come out on that. I know where there's some bully hens, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I know where one's going today. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me Keith as always it's a pleasure appreciate your time and I know everyone who watches the show does um, it, it, you know they're, they're eagerly anticipated these episodes so this one will go out uh, in uh, early part of 2022 um, so well thanks mate thanks really appreciate it no it's, it's my pleasure mate to have you down here and to bring your wife down here to see this part of the world and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the weekend. Yeah, and, no. uh, the viewers, I hope you can pick a few tips up. Um, and it's been worthwhile you being here. Super stuff. Well, we will. There'll be, I think, episode six. There's, they feel like an any episode time. six. Well, any excuse for a drink, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and share the living bejesus out of it. Until next time, everyone, take care. Yeah, good morning.